Hello everyone and welcome back to ammomart.com where you can find real firepower online. In today's video we're going to conclude our examination of the 327 Federal Magnum caliber. We've talked about its history and how it might fit into an everyday carry situation and now we'll test its stopping power using our normal setup to FBI standards. I know a lot of people out there don't like the term stopping power related to a pistol and I understand why but I don't have any other descriptive words for it, so that's what we're gonna call it. Before we continue, our facility is undergoing a little bit of construction, so if you happen to hear that type of noise, I apologize in advance, but we'll do our best to edit it out. What I've assembled is a 327 Federal Magnum from Ruger. We showed that pistol in a previous video, and it's totally designed for everyday carry. For today's demonstration, we're going to use two types of ammunition a jacketed soft point from Federal, and a self-defense round from Spear, their Gold Dot brand, which is about as good as self-defense rounds get by most people's standards. Our setup is the same as I mentioned. We're using 15% ballistic gelatin, and what we're hoping to demonstrate is, one, not only the stopping power that the 327 Federal Magnum is supposed to have, but how much recoil I can sense as compared to a 357 Magnum, say, which is what it was actually designed to compete with. I know that's a bit subjective, but in another video, we're gonna run them off side by side for a clearer demonstration of which one of those might be a better selection for those looking for a revolver. So let's not waste any more time. Let's see how it does in our gel test. What I have is 327 Federal Magnum, these are 100 grain from American Eagle, a jacketed soft point. So I'll do my best to call out the velocities if they record it. And if we rotate on a dead cylinder, that's okay. It'll just give me time to work with the gun. We're going to try to keep these towards the top of the gel block. More towards the center. 1,235 feet per second. And that was an error message. So as I'm sure you've noticed, once the weapon was fired, it has a large amount of recoil despite its advertisement. Now, later on, we will test how it stacks up to 357 Magnum. But as I stated in an earlier video, I've shot that weapon before. If you think that there's no recoil, that is not the gun for you. It is substantial. And of course, we have a 16 inch gel block. You can see the nice straight did get some cavitation as you would expect the bullets remained whole. They're not designed to expand. According to the FBI standard, you would want somewhere between 12 and 20 inches of penetration. This is right around 18 or so, actually perfect. And of course, we did put it through the FBI mandated layers of clothing. So, so far, definitely substantial power. Just so everyone can see, these are 115 grain gold dots. I'll do my best to try to keep it more towards the bottom so we can get a separation. Good and deep quick. And now the firing. Twelve forty-three, pretty similar to the other reading from Federal. 1272 and 1292. Going to clear the revolver out. Once again, substantial recoil, not super comfortable in the hand. It has a slammy type of recoil and not something you would have a lot of fun shooting all day. Keep in mind, 
This platform was designed for the SP-101, which is substantially heavier, and I know there are people carrying that caliber for every day, but not a lot. This is a very common everyday carry platform that I'm here to tell you, if you shot a lot, you got to be a really tough guy. So you can clearly see perfect cavitation. We're on a little bit of a dive down. The round did mushroom, of course. And I'm gonna step over to the other side to maybe get a better look. Perfect amount of penetration by depth as well, right around the 18 inch mark. Let's go see what we got over here on the other side. Yep. It almost came out. I'm actually touching it here. You can see the downward strike, good cavitation, definitely has lethal power, for sure. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and perhaps learned a little bit along the way. I've actually learned a little bit more about the 327 Federal Magnum caliber, but it almost reinforces something I always believe to be true. It does everything that it was designed to do However, at what cost? Yes, you do get one more round in the cylinder, but you also get a lot, in my opinion, of unmanageable recoil. Now, the downside to all of this is this. Yes, it's going to work, but it's extremely expensive, not only in purchase price. I recently started pricing the Ruger LCR X at the stores. You can expect to pay somewhere between $650 and up to $720 for that small platform. That to me makes it very undesirable. And now you factor in all of the cost in the ammunition, which we discussed earlier, is also quite expensive. Before we end, I would like to put a couple of different rounds into the gel block so our viewers can see what would happen if you downsize the power to 32 H&R Magnum and then the 32 Smith & Wesson Long. Do we lose power? but gain shootability? I'd like to find that out, so stay tuned in the next few minutes. I'm going to begin this portion of the video using 32 H&R Magnum rounds. They're just range rounds, not self-defense, and then conclude with the 32 Smith & Wesson Long. So the first three will be H&R Magnum, the last three will be 32 Smith Long, demonstrating also the versatility of the 327 Federal Magnum caliber. Okay, 32 H&R, and I'll try to call you out some velocity. Let's go right between the two. Way more of shootable, you'll notice way less recoil. 879, so that first one might have been an error. 1 was an error as well. The first one was an error because now the machine says error too. Now open the cylinder and go see the gel block and see what we got. So you'll notice that the H&R Magnum appears to be here and here. More than adequate penetration. Of course those rounds are not designed to expand, but we have significant penetration without loss of any sort of lethality, if that's the way you want to look at it, and the round is a lot more shootable. And now we'll conclude with the Smith & Wesson 32 long. You would expect a shootable cartridge for a gun that dates, or a caliber that dates back to 1878, but let's see. 513, yep, little pop gun. 502. 502. Let's try to roll this out. I must have the stagger wrong. And 501. Sorry about that, folks. I had my stagger wrong. These should be the lowest entries on the block. And now we're getting to the problem of 32 Smith & Wesson Long. Roughly eight inches of penetration, maybe nine, but certainly well short of the called for FBI standard.
In conclusion, I would like to say this. The 327 Federal Magnum was an improvement over the 32 H&R. Now that's an odd way to look at things based on our field demonstration because I must tell you, later on we will put the 32 H&R through this same test, but right now I find it to be a far superior caliber than 327 Federal based on its shootability alone. But don't hold me to that. Let's give a fair examination in the coming days of what it will do in the gel block as we test everything else. 327 is powerful, but that comes at a cost. And the cost, in my opinion, is shootability. Let's see how it stacks up against 357 Magnum side by side in our next video. Thank you for watching and don't be afraid to like and subscribe.